everyone, my name is Iris Franz. Today we're going to continue to talk about the budget constraint and the food stamp program. In particular, I'm using a whole variance book chapter 2, figure 2.6b. So if you watch my previous video, you will know that before 1979, if you want food stamps, you will have to purchase that from the government. But there was a change in the year 1979, so afterwards, if you're a poor family, you no longer have to purchase food stamps from the government, but the government is going to give you food stamps in the amount of $200. So now with these food stamps, you can go to the supermarket and purchase food up to $200. Now how would that change our budget constraint? Imagine you're one of those poor families with only $300. And with that $300, not without food stamp program, you only have $300 and you're only buying two items, the food items, just think of them as baguettes. And the non-food items, think of them as t-shirts. Now the price of a baguette is a dollar, and the price of a t-shirt is also one dollar. With that three hundred dollars, you can either buy three hundred baguettes and no t-shirts, or three hundred t-shirts and no baguettes, or any combination in between. So you can say purchase uh, 200 baguettes and 100 t-shirts or 150 baguettes and 150 t-shirts. Just any combination in between without the food stamp program. Now the government is giving you the food stamps. So think about those $200 food stamps as 200 free baguettes. So how would that 200 free baguettes change our budget constraint? If you use that 200, you consume that 200 free baguettes, then you still have $300 because the baguettes are free from the government. So you can use this $300 to buy t-shirts only. In that case, you will end up consuming 200 baguettes free from the government and 300 t-shirts. In that case, that will be this point, our king point, 200 baguettes and 300 t-shirts. So you'll be asking, what is this flat line in between? So these are the free baguettes. Think about that. You can consume these baguettes without paying for them. So suppose you're in the government and uh, the government gives you 100 free baguettes and after you consume the 100 free baguettes, you tell yourself, mm, that's enough, I don't want any more baguettes. Then you can just go home and use the $300 to buy only t-shirts. So that's this point, 100 baguettes and 300 t-shirts. And in fact, you can consume these 300 t-shirts, meaning spending all your $300 on t-shirts. You can consume it and you can increase the number of baguettes you consume up to the 200th baguette. Because the government only gives you 200 free baguettes. After the 200th free baguette, if you want to consume more baguette, you will actually have to buy it. So in that case, if you're buying more baguette, that means you have to consume fewer t-shirts. Suppose after the 200th baguette, you want to consume 50 more. Then in that case, you will have to use $50 to buy the baguettes. Meaning, you cannot use this $50 to consume t-shirts. So we are going to move to this direction. We will have to consume fewer t-shirts, we're moving down, in order to save the $50 to buy more baguettes. So in that case, you'll be consuming 250 baguettes and 250 t-shirt. Now suppose you only want to consume baguettes, what will happen? Well, you have 200 free baguettes from the government and you have $300. Now you're going to use the $300 to buy baguettes only. You can buy 300 baguettes. So 300 baguettes you purchase plus the 200 baguettes given by the government, you now consume 500 baguettes and no t-shirt. So you can see how the food stamp program shifts our budget constraint out. Now we can consume more than before. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.